Hey guys, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program where I know I promised you a minimum science buggy but as always when I make these plans I find out that I didn't quite have all the bits that I thought I had so here is Bill taking this machine to the moon to get us some, uh, some sciences uh, I'm not sure what biome we're going for quite yet but I just know that we are going to head to the, be the, the, the moon uh, so up top we have what I am calling my standard science vessel um, there is a command pod obviously the goo the materials bay I think there's a, a, a thermometer on there I'm gonna call it a temperature sensor again but there we go um, and whilst building the the moon stage so the standard science vessel then I've got decoupler four decouplers around the outside uh, a landing module which is just like four engines on on the fuel tanks and the, the, the landing gear as you can see there and these massive things underneath which I just well I, I built the, the the thing with four on there and I was gonna I was gonna put one massive one underneath the central science pod and went and when I was moving things around I went oh look I could put them on the outside and they don't clash because I've angled things outwards I know it's a bit wasteful of the of the fuel having it pointed inwards like that because it all pushes against each other and there's no no good but no uh, that's the way it is anyway so we're up at apoapsis and we're just going to cane through all the fuel now by uh bringing our orbit into some sort of circular thing just, just like that all it really remains now is to find out where we can like meet up with the moon perfectly uh and sort out the maneuver nudes for such things for some reason i've decided that i wanted to do it on the um inclination nodes um, and, and I don't know why, but it did bring us into the right right spot of the right orbit, so that's all good. Um, a quick, quick save. Yes, a quick, quick save later. We're going to turn around and point ourselves towards uh, the Maneuver Nude and um, accelerate our way, time accelerate our way, as close to the actual um, uh, 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 point of thrust. Yes, point of thrust. Uh, as as I as I deem myself worthy to take. Um, as always, trying to not overshoot, but as always, oh no, I didn't actually overshoot this time. That's good. I I normally overshoot quite a lot. But there's uh, the waste of the that got rid of my fuel tanks, and one more staging should uh, fire up my engines. Oh, ah. Well, as you may have guessed, they didn't have my set, uh, my staging set up properly. But I did do this quick, quick save here. Uh, there was actually at Apoapsis before I got round to being um, in a circular orbit. Um, so if I don't bring my periaps up quite as high, we could possibly possibly get round um, and do this boost manoeuvre a little bit um, quicker, because obviously a lower orbit means a faster orbit. Um, and also it leaves me some fuel to do my, what I'm going to call altitude climbing burn. I don't know what to actually call that is like a transfer burn I suppose yeah yeah it'll be the transfer burn yeah that's what that's what I'm going to call that one from now on Woo! Uh, I should really go and uh, check up some sort of like NASA approved um, language use guide is there a language use guide um, but yeah anyway uh, a skillful rearrangement of my staging setup whatever you call this thing on the left the staging order uh, and we get the engines firing that should be firing and we point ourselves well, not towards the moon but close enough towards the moon and watch that green bar drop because that is essentially what this game is all about it's making those green bars do what you want them to do right so we quickly swap to map view get rid of the maneuver node and make a precision decision about precision decision i like that about where where we're going to go now we've watched this transfer happen lots so what we're going to do is skip over to this point where i'm making a burn in orbit around the moon trying to get my periaps down low so we can have a nice high efficiency burn uh to to land now i, I went a little bit low there and the, the orbit looked like it was going to be smashing into some mountains so i just thrusted myself back up and and got to a nice safe uh, scenario so t all that's really left to do at this point is time warp round and start thinking about landing um, I thought it best to skip over all the boring sort of inner space stuff uh, inner space intra space stuff because it is really boring um, now thankfully I've managed to get this happening on the Sun side of the planet the Sun side of the planet yeah the lit plant side of the planet uh, and I think what we're gonna do is possibly try and put down in that crater over there well that is exactly what I, what I was gonna do um, 
And it should be nice and easy. I'd like to have my, my lights on when I land so that I can tell how far away the floor is. Uh, as discussed last time, whilst an internal view would be more accurate because you've got the, the, the vertical radar thing. Using lights to tell how far away the floor is, is acceptable. It, it works for me. Um, as soon as the floor changes colour, I can go, right, I've really got to start deciding about where I am. Uh, at that point, I should be going slow. If I'm still moving at like kilometres per second at that point, oh, it's all over, you know, <laughs> you cannot react fast enough for that. But anyway, looking at the beautiful desolation, desolation below us, we start to pick out where a landing site's going to be. Now, obviously, there are a lot of craters, and I'd kind of like to put down on a flat bit, um, just because, you know, that's easier. Uh, that, that flat bit directly below me would be ideal. And thankfully I seem to be right on track for doing that. Uh, my horizontal velocity has just turned into going backwards so that's all fine. We've definitely stopped ourselves and now all we've got to do is plummet our way down to the lowest depths of this crate. Thus we have to sit through what what I can only really call the most tedious bit of this entire game is coming in for landing. You, you just drift down, even doing things like seeing like what science you can you can capture from from this particular orbit. It doesn't really make up for how mind numbingly boring it is. I've got so much time going around and individually turning lights on just to try and fill up my time here. Uh, I, I do like the way that I've got blue on the outside, yellow in the middle. Uh, it, it just makes a nice little colour combination there. It's very striking on the floor, as you will find out once we get down there. Anyway, I am plummeting towards the floor at tens of metres per second. It's not really the type of speed you want to be hitting at, but at the same time, I, oh, I, I just want to, like, get down there as soon as possible. And indeed, it gets up before I really see what's going on. It looks terrible. Uh, I know it looks terrible. I've lost two engine, uh, four engines, sorry, but they were just my four outside engines. Now, what technically happened there was a hardware-assisted braking. Everything that I want to come back with me is fine. So, yay, that's all good. Let's do some science. All right, material studies down at the east far side crater. Looking good. That's a whole load of science there. Uh, turn the lights on and make everything right. There we go. Look at the colour combination. Isn't that amazing? Anyway, the goo is happy, the goo is fine, and we're going to do some temperature logging. That's it. That's everything we wanted to... No, we needed to do crew reports and indeed get um, all the Kerbal-based science, uh, the, the EVA and the surface sample. Also a prime opportunity for thumbnail captures, because... You know, you need, you need decent things to uh, entice people in on your video uh, thumbnail. So that's what I'm going to try and do. Oh, look, when I turn my lights on for my Kerbal, the, the, the lights underneath my feet disappear. How very strange. Now, because I had my back to the sun, I thought, I know what, I'll turn around and get my face to the sun. But unfortunately, I kind of fell over, but I thought this would also make a cracking screenshot. So I, I got that as well. And we're also going to get this one. Nice of me to leave my mouse in the way there. I should remember to do uh, to move that next time that I'm doing uh, screenshots. Anyway, all the science done. All that's left is to plant a, a flag. Um, and of course, the, the process of naming flags is a very important thing. So there is a massive pause here whilst I try and think about what I'm going to do. And after such a pause, all I settle for is Bill, Bill strides forth. Uh, yay, science. Uh, take that, Jeb, because as we all know, Jeb is the, 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 the selfish one. Like, have you ever, like, opened up a ship without telling anyone who'd go in it and not found Jeb there? Uh, it, it's despicable that he gets away with it, really. Um, after a small bit of acrobatics and getting on top of my ship, I decided to pause for another screenshot because landing right on top like that is quite difficult. Yeah, Bill. Work it. Go on. Oh, the camera loves you. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, we're going to take Bill uh, back into the ship. Just a small backwards hop is all it takes. And preparing ourselves, we're going to um, get the staging right this time. Uh, you'll remember that up in space, I flew all these, uh, threw all these pods aside from me. Well, we're going to do exactly the same again this time. Uh, but we're going to take the central module with us. And this is why it was all right that we lost all but that middle engine, because that middle engine is the only thing that's bringing us home. So with our final pre-flight checks done, we're going to uh, slowly lift off and then disperse the uh, the pods, because 
we didn't want them blowing up right next to us. Now it turns out I managed to break some of my uh, my landing gear on the way uh, on the landing. I should have thought about that whilst I was on the floor. Of course that was going to happen, but that's all right. We're in a low gravity environment, so if we get ourselves up to a, a fairly decent uh, trajectory, we can fix that on flight because you know once I stop accelerating, we can get the Kerbal out and we're both moving at the same speed, so we can fix things like that. But first, we're going to get ourselves up into orbit, I hope. Um, we are of course in a crater which means that if I've not got up high enough we could be slamming into the side of it but I think we're all right that uh, yeah look at that 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 was just thrusting randomly and we're all right um, also it just happens to be that wherever my apple apsis is was the perfect point to um, continue burning onwards so we're, we're just gonna face up with this maneuver node hopefully get out and, and uh, repair those landing gear and then we're going to go home that's the only thing left to do on this mission of course that's not to uh, trivialize what i am about to undertake I mean, this is still a space flight and we still have an atmosphere to go through and more importantly a safe landing though the good thing about kerbin is once you throw enough parachutes on you can almost guarantee yourself to be safe um how many of those parachutes like how many parachutes you need for that is a matter of subject to subjective opinion uh, I today have gone for five, I believe it's five, four radial ones and one on top, um, and this, oh wow, uh, absolute mastery of controls there, sorry I was literally lost for words of what I was doing there, um, so I failed to close the legs but that's alright, I've repaired them both and that's the important thing, so we get back in and close the legs like that. And hopefully we're now going to time warp all the way around to the maneuver nude because well, because orbit's boring. And thankfully, past me, on cue, start speeding up the time. I love it when me and him work together like that. It's almost as if we're the same person. Anyway, the uh, the Kerbin rise there tells us that we're getting round to uh, being uh, roughly where we want to be. We want to make sure that Kerbin is almost completely on our right-hand side. Pointed a little bit towards, but near enough completely on our right-hand side. So that we can... Um, counter the orbital velocity of the Mun because we're obviously traveling at the same speed of the Mun <coughs> and with that bring ourselves down into a hopefully aero braking maneuver if not just a smashing into the uh, to the rock screaming maneuver um, as I say I have enough parachutes to deal with either eventuality uh, and my track record with aero braking is not great um, I either graze too low uh, too high or just go slamming into stuff far too Heavily. So you saw me set up the maneuver node, you're just going to have to take my word for it that I did it exactly as the computer wanted me to. Um, and with that we are back in um, the atmosphere. Uh, Bill can taste the, the, the sweetness of home, he smells the, the, the wonderfulness of burning metal as we come screaming through the atmosphere. It's not burning quite yet, I mean as you can see we're already down to like 30 35 kilometers and we're only just starting to build up any sort of heat shock uh, of course I, I'm not running deadly re-entry on this uh, I, I'm starting to debate whether I should or not because I do play this game quite a lot but anyway we're, we're not doing that so it doesn't matter what angle I come in at we're just going to get somewhere close to the uh, to the to the space center and deploy my parachute so that we don't like smash into the ground screaming and kicking uh, it turns out that we are on the wrong side of the, the mountains I don't care I came from the moon this, this is a lot closer than I intended I, I just wanted to get somewhere on the planet and this this is awesome like the, <coughs> I always seem to end up in the uh, in the same continent somewhere so this is good uh, I can only assume it's because the continent takes up at least like quarter of the planet so it's so like a one in four chance and I've to be fair, I've done like eight missions now, so well, I don't know how many. It might be eight, it might be not. Uh, anyway, so I can look down around me, and I've noticed that I'm coming down in rather hilly terrain. Now, this isn't great. Um, a, a whole load of things could go wrong with such hilly terrain, especially as I am completely out of fuel. That was me realizing that there. Um, but that's all right. We're, we're, we're going to drop down, and we're going to hopefully, hopefully, let our legs take all the impact settle us down oh that hill's really steep right oh bill it was nice knowing you my friend you you did well you got science oh oh things blew up i'm not sure what blow, blew up there um i'm hoping it was just um 
like parachutes and radial stuff. Uh, now, for some reason, I decided to leave and and come like try and recover stuff. Uh, recover stuff in the uh, uh, tracking station. Wow, English is working well today. Um, I don't know why I didn't just recover what I saw, but there we go. That that's what's going on. Uh, what I'm doing right now is uh, scanning through all the well through all the the ship bits. I've um, enabled debris as well, looking for anything called the low tolerance that is landed on Kerbin. So I thought I'd um, uh, recovered a bit, and it uh, appears that I had recovered some science, and now I've also recovered this science. Um, the materials bay is missing from that list, so we'll have to find out what's going on there. But that's alright, we've got some science, and I say thank you very much for joining me and Bill for this adventure, guys. Uh, next off, sending the, uh, the, the buggy that we're going to build next to Minmus. So yeah, thank you very much for joining me, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye!